Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. I'm Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God, welcoming you to the program, What is Truth? Now, before we get started, I'd like to give tribute to a lady whom I've got to know, and I consider her my friend. Uh, her name is Dolores Cerner. We call her D. She's a lovely lady. Uh, she had mentioned to me that she watched our program every week. She studied her Bible and she passed away just this, just a week ago. We feel so sorry and we want to give uh, our condolences to the family and she, knowing that she, she will be sorely missed. So now we're going to getting started now on the program. What if, what if you could talk to God face to face? What would you say? That would be an interesting question, would it not? Suppose you were standing in a long line and there were people in front of you that were, were talking to Jesus Christ at his return. Jesus is now sitting on his throne, on David's throne, and he's talking to people, and now it's going to be your turn to talk to Jesus Christ. What would you say? Well, the conversation might go like this. Look, I saw you coming in the cloud. I saw the graves open up. I saw the dead rise up out of their graves. I saw those Christians standing and they started to rise up and go up with the people who were dead. And I was like glued to the ground. Why didn't I go up? I studied the Bible. I worshiped you. Uh, what happened? Why wasn't I among those who were resurrected who were uh, who were brought up and uh, what happened why wasn't I chosen and Jesus Christ might just say you did not keep my commandments wait a minute wait a minute hold it Jesus I kept your commandments well you didn't keep the fourth commandment. Well, what commandment's that? Well, let's turn there and let's look. Jesus Christ is going to show you what commandment you didn't keep. Exodus chapter 20, and we're starting in verse 8. And here it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You didn't keep my Sabbath day holy. <clears throat> it says six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day, that was Saturday, is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, your man servant, nor your maid servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger, this is a Gentile, that is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. He made it holy, and you didn't keep it. 
You were out there washing the car. You were doing the laundry. You were out there shopping. You were out there watching the ball game. You didn't keep my Sabbath day holy. Yeah, but Lord, I kept the other holy, I kept the other commandments. I kept them all. Well, let's see what my brother James says in James chapter 2. We'll see what James has to say about that. James chapter 2, and we're going to verse 10. And Jesus is showing you this in the, in the Bible. And it says here, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Let's read that again. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if you do not commit, if you commit no adultery, yet if you kill or you steal, or whatever other commandment, you are become a transgressor of the law. Wow, you transgressed my law. You broke my law. You are guilty of breaking all 10 commandments if you only broke one. What would you say? Face to face. You're talking to Jesus Christ face to face. What would you say? Well, I, I, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know that, that the Sabbath was the seventh day. I thought the Sabbath was Sunday. Yeah, but you heard, you know of other groups that kept the Sabbath. You know of other groups that kept Saturday. Church of God, you know, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Seventh-day Baptists. There were people keeping the seventh day. You knew about it. Why didn't you investigate? Why didn't you look into it? Why didn't you prove it? Now, by now, you're practically speechless. Well, if I would have known it, I, I would have kept it. Well, let's, let's look back at Leviticus chapter 23. Let's go all the way back to Leviticus chapter 23. And let's look here at verse 2. Leviticus 23, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, concerning the feasts of the Lord. Did you see that? These are the feasts of the Lord. If you want to know what the Lord's feasts are, all you have to do is read Leviticus 23, and it explains you the feasts of the Lord. You never kept any of the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. That means you come together. Even these are my feasts. They belong to me. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. It doesn't say it's the Sabbath of the Jews or the Israelites or the Hebrews, it says, it is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Wow, I didn't realize that. I just didn't realize it. Well, I, I read the New Testament. I didn't read the Old Testament. Okay, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. 
and we'll start in verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, this is Satan, came to him, came to Jesus, he said, if you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Jesus had just fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He was afterward a hungered. But he answered, Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. All the Old Testament proceeds out of the mouth of God. He quoted Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. So man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, if you read that, you could have, and you knew the other nine commandments, and you said you kept all the other nine commandments, why didn't you keep my Sabbath day. You might be speechless. You might really be speechless by this time. Well, Lord, I didn't quite understand that living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Is there another scripture I could look at? Well, certainly. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19, and we'll look in verse 16. And behold, one came, this is, doesn't say a Jew, doesn't say a Gentile, just said one came, and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? That's a good question, isn't it? You want eternal life? What good thing should you do? And he said unto him, Why call you me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. Plural. Keep the commandments. Which commandments should I keep? He said unto him, which? Why did he say which? Jesus said, you shall do no murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Why did he say which? Because there were two sets of commandments. The first set was Moses was given that set at Mount Sinai. He came down with the Ten Commandments. The second set were the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees had put together the commandments of men. They put together what they call the oral law. And they put the oral law on a par with the Ten Commandments. And that's why this young man wanted to know which set of commandments am I supposed to keep. And Jesus Christ pointed out to him those ten commandments. By naming five of them, he pointed out what set to keep. Now, we're going to take a short break. We will be back very soon. Please don't go away. We've got more proof. We're, we'll be right back.
Hi, I'm Cheryl Burke, and I have a confession to make. I have a serious crush on my workout. Hip, fun, and always a challenge. Jazzercise is the total package. It's the only workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. Attention homeowners, apartment complexes and business parks and homeowners associations. Now is the best time to make your property beautiful again. Since 1967, Gonzales Landscaping has offered beautiful professional landscaping services to all of southern New Mexico. Our team has been designing and installing landscapes for over 47 years. Where quality is an obsession. Gonzales Landscaping is locally owned and operated. We are licensed commercial, residential specialists dedicated to providing reliable and quality service. We offer residential and commercial landscaping design. Full lawn, tree and shrub care, with annuals and perennials, tree and palm trimming, spring and fall cleanups, mulching and more. Let us do the work at prices you can afford. We service all of Las Cruces. We are New Mexico's premier commercial landscaping and residential landscaping company. Visit us online at gonzalesnursery.com or call us for a free estimate. 575 382 7272 Welcome back to the program. Uh, the program, in case you tuned in late, is what if you could talk to God face to face? What if? You could talk to God face to face. What would you say if you found out that you weren't raptured, you weren't taken up to, this, to meet the Lord in the air, you saw the dead bodies, you saw the graves open up, you saw the dead bodies come out, you saw them rise up in the air, you saw Christians that were standing, <clears throat> And they were starting to rise up in the air to meet the Lord in, in the air. And your feet were glued to the ground. You, you, you couldn't rise up. And you say, Lord, why wasn't I raptured? Why, why wasn't I? Why didn't I come up and meet you up in the air? And he, and he says, you didn't keep my commandments. And you said, well, w wait a minute. I did keep, I kept nine of your commandments. Well, you didn't keep my Sabbath. And you didn't keep my Sabbath commandment. The Sabbath commandment starts out, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You forgot the Sabbath day. You didn't keep it holy. You did your thing. You went shopping you washed the car, you did the laundry, you did other things, you watched the ball game, you did other things. You didn't keep my Sabbath day holy. Really? I, I thought your Sabbath was Sunday. No. Let's go to the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says. It, Let's go to Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man. Mankind. The Sabbath was what? Made for who? For mankind. And not mankind or man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Why didn't he say, I'm Lord here of Sunday. You can keep Sunday if you want to keep Sunday. He didn't say that. Let's read that again. Verse 27. And he said unto them, The Sabbath, that's the seventh 
day was made for man, for mankind, so mankind could rest, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath day. You didn't keep my Sabbath. You broke my Sabbath commandment. James chapter 2, I repeat, I'll repeat that, says if you keep the whole law and offend in one point, you're guilty of all. If you've broken one of God's commandments, you've broken them all. Let's go now to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, and we're starting at verse 4. For he spoke in a certain place, that's Exodus chapter 20 and Leviticus 23. For he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. That is the Sabbath day that God rested that he made it holy. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, God calls it my rest, seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Okay, let's stop here for one moment. What, what didn't they enter in because of unbelief? They did not enter into the land of milk and honey. They were released from Egyptian slavery. They came out of Egyptian slavery. They were in the desert and they marched around the desert for 40 years. That was a punishment because they didn't go in and take the land. They could have went in and taken the land and they wouldn't have to walk 40 years out in the desert and they would have had the rest. They had no rest out there in the desert. They all died. So let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back to Hebrews. And he says here, <clears throat> verse 7. Again, he limits a certain day. God limits a certain day. That's the seventh day. The saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. We're going to stop there. It says, harden not your hearts. What does that mean? Well, it means when you find out about the Sabbath, and you harden your heart, and you say, I'm not going to keep the Sabbath day. I refuse to keep the Sabbath. I'm going to keep Sunday. You are in rebellion to Almighty God. Let's read on now. Verse 8, For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? If he wanted to keep Sunday, if he wanted us to keep Sunday, would he have not spoken of keeping another day, keeping Sunday? Therefore, there remains, therefore, a rest, a sabbaton, a period of resting to the people of God. 
For he who has entered into his rest, he has also ceased from his own works as God did from his. God wants you to rest. He wants you to rest on the seventh day. It's the Sabbath day. Why don't you try it? Why don't you come with us on Saturday at 1 o'clock? We meet in the meeting room at 1701 East Missouri, and we have a Bible study. You can bring your Bible, a notebook, a pen, bring your questions. What if you stood before God today, this very day, and you, you didn't make the resurrection, and you weren't raptured, what would you say to God? And if God told you, you didn't keep my Sabbath day. Okay, we have these two very important booklets that we're sharing with you today. The first booklet is, What Do You Mean Salvation? What could be more important to you than your salvation? What could be more important? Nothing could be more important to you than your salvation. Absolutely nothing. And the second booklet is, I don't have it handy, Why Do You Keep Sunday? These two booklets are free. There's no cost. We never ask the public for money. You can have a DVD of this program for free. And please join us at the meeting room at 1701 East Missouri. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.